Hey everybody, it's your Sam again and I'm here with another video. Today I kind of wanted to go over something kind of weird, <laughs> but it is what I've been doing a little bit of research on and it's something that has always interested me. And it's flowers and the meanings of flowers and different colors of flowers and how to take care of them and all that good stuff. Now, the reason why I have been doing a little bit of research on this is because my new project, the Demon Project, I am going to be making use of a lot of flowers and colors and have those mean significant things in the book. It's going to be kind of like hidden messages kind of thing and it's a way for the character my main character and the demon to communicate in a way so yeah <laughs> I've been doing a little bit of research on that and I wanted to go over just a few of my favorite flowers and they are actually going to make an appearance in this book so my favorite flower is the iris now there are different breeds of iris there's the dwarf iris there's the japanese iris there's the bearded iris and i mean it, it goes on there i don't know exactly how many different sub irises there are but there are a lot of them and irises are beautiful to me and their smell is great and they are a flower that i grew up with we had irises at mamas, we had irises at grandmas and at my grannies, and I have dealt with them a lot. <laughs> I've weeded them, transplanted them, planted them, seen if we could breed them so that two colors could combine and create like a, a new kind of color for the garden. And yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's a flower that is near and dear to my heart and the meaning behind an, ir an iris is a message. There's a bouquet and you want every flower to mean something or to, to depict something. You want to tell this person in kind of a secret language what you want to say. <laughs> and an iris is a way to depict, hey, there is a message here, pay attention. And honestly, irises are just beautiful to me. That's the reason why I fell in love with them, and that is why they are my favorite flower. I They're easy to take care of. I can't kill them. <laughs> so that's a plus. I, I absolutely adore them. I love the way the petals fall, and some of them stand up in the crest. And my favorite ones are the dwarf irises and the bearded irises just because the colors in them are usually just so vibrant and they catch your eye you can be driving down the road going 60 miles an hour and you will see the group of irises by the road because the colors usually catch your eye they come in very many different colors they come in purples yellows whites reds I mean the list is a lot there's even some black irises now and there's some that are bred to be different colors we had irises that were white with a purple lining or had the crest or the top part of the iris be white and the bottom part of the iris be a red or a purple I mean the color combinations are endless as well as just yeah, it's it's amazing to me. Another um, favorite of mine that might make an appearance is Clematis. Clematis is another flower that I had everywhere growing up. It's a vine and it is gorgeous. It's uh, purples and my family and I like a lot of purple things <laughs> mom had some clematis and it was on a great kind of thing that we had and it was growing outside of the our bedroom it was my sister's bedroom at first and then when she kind of moved out i moved in kind of thing and its meaning is mental beauty and i always thought that the meaning of the clematis was 
kind of odd. Um, I didn't really know why a flower could depict mental beauty, but the stages that the Clematis goes through in its growth is interesting and it can show, kind of depict, I guess, in stages the way a brain can grow. And some of its little fruit and seeds can kind of look a little bit like neurons. And so I'm guessing that's the reason why <laughs> a little bit, but another one is hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are big, beautiful bushes of flowers and they are clusters of small flowers and they come in a wide variety of colors as well. And the meaning of the hydrangea is gratitude for being understood. So you got that bouquet message kind of thing, you know, if, if they understand the message of that bouquet, maybe you can send them a hydrangea and gratitude for being understood kind of thing. But it also can mean frigidity or heartlessness as well. So you've got a combination there that you can work with. But hydrangeas are beautiful. I remember my great grandmother's hydrangea. It was blue mostly and in, in white. Um, some of the colors kind of change with the acidity in the soil. So hers were so heavy that most of the flowers would bend and lay on the ground because the stems just could not hold them up. Another one is lavender. I've always just loved the smell of lavender. It's very relaxing to me and is very relaxing to a lot of people and I've always thought it was a beautiful flower as well. I used to have dried lavender a little bit of everywhere in my room because I like the look of it and I like the smell of it even though the smell kind of faded with time but you can always get some more lavender and hang them up to dry and then still have the scent kind of going around. Lavender is one of those that has a negative connotation in the meaning. It, it means distrust. So yeah, lavender means distrust. But it smells so good. <laughs> Another one that I love is morning glories. These flowers bloom of a morning up into the afternoon. Some of them go a little bit past the afternoon, but usually in broad sunlight, they tend to close up because this is its way of conserving water. Their meaning is affection. And they are a dainty little flower. They're a dainty little vine and they grew on a lot of our fences. Uh, some of them kind of grew up on corn stalks <laughs> in our garden. And sometimes they can kind of grow up trees. They kind of like more sapling type trees than the bigger trees just because bigger trees usually have a harder uh, bark for the morning glory to try to dig into. So saplings have a little bit of softer bark for the morning glory to kind of dig into and hold on. Same with fence posts. Fence posts usually wear down over time. Plus you have the barbed wire or the cording of the fence for the morning glories to grab onto and that's the reason why they like to kind of go along fences but yeah beautiful flower and last but not least violet i love violets i like the wild violets and i also like african violets those two are my favorite uh, wild vi violets used to grow in our yard all the time and they are also the flower of the month of february and I was almost, I lacked one day of being born in February, so that would be my flower. <laughs> With me being born in January, my flower is carnation, I do believe. The meaning of violet is loyalty or devotion or faithfulness. It can also mean modesty, but modesty is usually reserved for things like daisies and lilies because of the white color but violets is also kind of known for modesty. The reason why I have been studying these flowers and kind of trying to incorporate the flowers into my demon project is because I want there to be a subconscious conversation going on between the characters in this book. 
the flowers have already made a huge impact on the book and I'm only 11 pages in. Flowers are a way for the people to protect themselves against the demon because there are some flowers strong enough to protect against demon possession and to ward off demons because of their smell. Morning Glory is definitely one of the ones that are used to deflect demons. There are Morning Glories all around the compound that I have written and there are morning glories that are planted everywhere so all the hunters all the people who can see demons or come in contact with the demons they usually have morning glories somewhere in their house all around them something like that is as a ward against demons so yeah that's a little peek into project demon <laughs> for you as well as a little bit of knowledge on some of my favorite flowers actually all of my favorite flowers so i hope this video was a little bit interesting and tell me what your favorite flower is in the comment down below and maybe the reason why if you feel if you feel comfortable sharing that or if you want to know what the meaning of your flower is then go ahead and comment down below if you don't want to google it that information has become widely known now and it's it's interesting how some of the meanings have changed over the years. I have an old farmer's almanac from 19, what is it, 56? And the Morning Glory used to be known for uh, irritation or overabundance or energetic instead of just affection. So that's kind of how flower meanings have changed, unless the Farmer's Almanac of 1956 had a typo in it, which could very possibly be. <laughs> so yeah, let me know in the comments down below uh, what you think about this video, and if you'd like to see more videos like this. I try to post videos every Sunday and Thursday. They can be on my writing endeavors or little sneak peeks into things like this or what I'm researching at the time. And they can also be on my uh, mental stability <laughs> or some of the things that us as writers with anxiety and depression tend to go through and hopefully how to help us out of that. I also do live streams every Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So feel free to join me. We do little 20 minute sprints for the most part where we write and be productive and we can write together. As always, be kind to one another, stay safe, keep writing and keep being creative and I will see you next time.